Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. Um, yeah, we're basically still playing catch up with our Future Fights, which is okay. Um, I did get all my stuff back, so I am completely settled now. So I'm able to just pump videos like crazy now. Um, I'm also like settled with my new job and all that, so everything's settled, so we should be back to the path of greatness so to speak um but yeah let's get right into our future fight that we are doing today the future fight that we are doing right now is our blue wave deck from gbt 13 um not much to say about that so let's just get right into it uh we're heading towards the new set of um or not the new set but going towards standard um, Vanguard standard format with like all the new stuff so we're playing catch up super fast in case anyone wanted to see these decks um, for the rest of the summer basically uh, have the option to play these decks as we move into standard and premium formats um, so yeah let's talk about this a little bit um, so into our main deck as usual we have seven grade threes uh, we have our main grade three that came out of GBT 13 which is uh, Valios or Valios, however you would like to pronounce it. Um, Blue Wave Marshall Valios, uh, four of those. It has two abilities. Uh, the first ability is at the beginning of your ride phase, you can counter blast one. If you do, choose up to one card with the Blue Wave card, uh, with Blue Wave in its card name from your hand. Call it to Rearguard Circle, that unit gets plus 2,000 power. And if you call it a card, you draw a card. So it allows you to play a card for free. Um, you kind of like break even by playing a card or some would even say that you plus one Depends on how you count your pluses and your minuses um, I would just say that you plus one because you still have that unit on the field and you drew a card for free um, Also, the 2k doesn't seem like much but um, Depending on what you call the 2k can mean a lot um, and also depending on what you're fighting against um, Its second ability is when your G unit with blue wave in its name uh, strides you can Soul Blast a Blue Wave card, and if you do, then uh, your opponent's Vanguard uh, stays at 11k, um, or it, it increases or decreases to 11k, basically. If they are a 6k Vanguard, they increase to 11. If they're a 13k Vanguard, they decrease to 11. Uh, if they're 11, they just stay 11. And it just keeps um, their Vanguard power at 11 for the rest of the turn, no matter like what affects it. So like. It can't gain power in any way, which really helps Aqua Force as a deck because you want to be hitting your opponent for numbers and not have to worry about them hitting damage triggers to like lessen the impact of your turn. Um, moving on to our secondary grade 3, we have Blue Wave Dragon Arsenal Fleet Dragon, another card to come out of GBT 13. It's uh, good on Rearguard Circle and as a stride fodder um, to use technically because of its two abilities. So the first ability, the reason why it's good on Rearguard Circle, is it has a Generation Break 1 that says when this unit attacks, you can counter blast a Blue Wave card. If you do, this unit gets plus 4,000 power until the end of the turn. And if it is the second battle of that turn, aka Wave 2, uh, stand this unit. So pretty cool. You can attack with your Vanguard, and then you can attack with this if you really want to. And then just stack the triggers on it, and then restand it, um, and attack your opponent twice with it. It's pretty good in combination with Valios, stuff like that. Like I said, Valios keeps you at 11k, so it uh, gains 4k to itself. So uh, if you, let's say that you call this card at the beginning of the turn off of Valios, this is another one of those things I was talking about where the 2k matters. So you give 2k to Arsenal Fleet, making it 13, and then its own skill would give it um, 4k, so it'd be 17k without triggers. Let's say you check a crit, you stack it on it, um, it's 22k with a crit twice. So uh, it's pretty strong uh, and hard for your opponent to deal with in ways. Um, its other ability is activates in the drop zone. When your Vanguard with Blue Wave in its name stands due to an effect from one of your cards, uh, then you can Soul Blast one and return this card to your hand, basically making it a free stride fodder. So that's pretty good. Moving on to our grade twos, we have 12 grade twos. Uh, starting off our grade two lineup, we have four Blue Wave Marine General uh, Foivos, um, or Foivos, however you would prefer to pronounce it. Um, it's really good on the rear guard circle, only good on the rear guard circle pretty much. Uh, if you ride it, it's not a big deal, but it doesn't do anything on Vanguard Circle. 
Uh, its rearguard skill is when this unit attacks a vanguard. If you have a blue wave vanguard, then you can counter boss one if you are uh, on wave three. Uh, so basically you can only do this on the third attack of the turn. Um, but when you attack a vanguard, if you have a vanguard with blue wave in its name, you counter boss one, this unit gets 2000 power, and at the end of that battle, it restands. So it kind of does what Arsenal Fleet does, but uh, you can attack, like, it's cool that Arsenal Fleet is on second battle, and Foivos is on third, because if you have an Arsenal and a, a Foivos on the rearguard circle, you just make sure to attack the Arsenal second, which means attack with your vanguard first, Arsenal second, restands, then Foivos third, restands, and then you have two more attacks um, that you can just do, so that's pretty good. Um, then we have four Gallius. Uh, Gallius is also a good card that came out of the new set. Um, the only thing that I don't like about it is that you have to discard a card, which can be kind of mess sometimes, but it does allow you to make like uh, four attacks with one column, uh, just having Gallius, so that's pretty good. But uh, the ability is Generation Break 1 on the Rear Guard Circle. When this unit attacks, if you have a Vanguard with Blue Wave in its original name, which means um, that you have to be on a Blue Wave stride, literally. Uh, you cannot, like, it does not work the same way that Foivos does, where it says if you have a Blue Wave Vanguard, because the name of your heart would transfer to your, um, would transfer to your stride. Um, so you can't go into, like, things like Lambros or Megiddo or um, Alexandros and use Gallius on the same turn. It has to be, like, you going into um, Flood Hazard or you going to Tetra Boil because those have Blue Wave in the name. But um, yeah, like I said, if you have a Vanguard with Blue Wave in its original card name, uh, you can counter boss one and discard a card from your hand that has Blue Wave in its name. If you do, this unit gets some, some skills, or one skill in particular. It says when your Vanguard attacks, stand this unit gets 2,000. And then if it's the first battle um, of the turn that you use this, then you stand it. So the way that this reads is a little confusing for some people. The way that it works is like so. Um, you would attack with Gallius first attack of the turn, Gallus would restand itself, and then you would attack with Gallius again, and then when your Vanguard attacks, Gallius would restand again, uh, making four, th uh, four attacks because it would be one, two from Gallius first, three from your Vanguard, fourth from Gallius. So that's what I mean by four attacks with one column. It's uh, pretty solid. Then we have four Medora. This is um, another one of our new GBT 13 cards. It has resist, which is pretty good. Uh, for fighting like the um, matchups like you know Kagero, your Chronicle, Link Joker, you can put this in the back row, and Link Joker can't really touch it with Lacus Karina, um, and all these things are just really good for it. But its ability is that uh, on the rear guard circle, Generation Break One, if you have a Vanguard with Blue Wave in its name, this unit gets a con uh, two continuous skills, or sorry, one continuous skill and one auto skill. Uh, the continuous skill is this unit can attack from the back row. The auto skill is when this unit does attack a vanguard from the back row, it gets 3,000 power. So it becomes 11k, which matches up perfectly with your uh, your Valios, keeping your opponent at 11k, and so on and so forth. Uh, we have four Kelpie Rider Nikki, just to use as a stride fodder. Um, obviously, striding is important. This is a stride deck, so we run four stride fodders. Um, we run four of the uh, Blue Wave PG Yorgos. Um, it has three abilities. Uh, one is a Sentinel, which means you can't run more than four Sentinels in your deck. You guys know that. Um, second ability is when this unit is placed on Guard Circle from the hand, you can uh, discard a card and PG a unit with Blue Wave in its name. So you can PG Vanguards or Rear Guards um, with this card, which is pretty good against stuff like that. Stuff that you don't want to hit your Rear Guard and get an effect off of you. Um, things like Commander Laurel, um, decks and so on and so forth um the second ability or the third ability is uh in the during the main phase while it's in your drop zone generation break one you can bind this card face up choose one of your rear guards with blue wave in its name and that unit can attack from the back row so you can actually make some pretty solid like combos um some pretty solid but awkward combos when you use your ghost to like make like foivos attack from the back row or Arsenal flea attack from the back row, but sometimes it lets you get um, allows you to get out four attacks, whereas you wouldn't have gotten that off. Um, even if you just need to use it on one of your grade one uh, grade ones that usually boost, you can attack from the back row and maybe hit something. But you can maybe hit something if they have a seven K on the board. If not, um, then that you kind of just play it by ear. Um, 
but yeah, if like if not, you just kind of play it by ear. Like it's not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, it just it kind of just is what it is. Um, then we have uh, four Baragios. Um, Baragios is our Abyssal Owl clone um, for Valios. I feel like every new deck that has like a another Strider card, kind of that's not um, that is not a actual Stride fodder, or like when they release new stuff um, like Valios and compared to Thavis, um, like Nikki's for Thavis. Uh, but when they release new Striders, I feel like they've been giving them this search top 7 for them type thing. So uh, what Baragios does is, when it's placed on the rearguard from hand, look at the top 7 cards from your deck. Um, search for Avalios, uh, reveal it, put it into your hand. Um, and then if you do, uh, put a card into your hand. You choose one or more cards with the sum of their grades being 3 or greater from your hand and discard them. What this means is that if you are needing a grade 3 in your hand, you do not have a grade 3 already, you can Baragios, look at top 7, if you get a Valios, you can discard a 2 and a 1, or 3 1s. Um, so just be very careful about how you use this card, a lot of people think that you can use this card, get a Valios, keep the Valios, and like discard your uh, hand, and you'll get to keep the Valios, but you won't because the Valios will be in your hand before the discarding effect would activate. So we're, um, best case scenario, you would be discarding the Valios. Um, so it also thins your deck when you're already on Valios, which is cool. Uh, its other rearguard skill is when this uh, when your Vanguard with Blue Wave in its name stands, you stand this unit. So helps you restand some columns and get some good attacks off. Uh, then rounding out our Grade One lineup, we have two Blue Wave Soldier Bright Shooter. This has always been one of my favorite cards of the deck, even since um, the old Anger Boil deck was a thing. Uh, it's just very good. Uh, at the end, of, so its rearguard skill is wave four or more. At the end of the battle, this unit boosted. If you have a Vanguard with Blue Wave in its name, choose up to one grade three from your drop zone and put it into your hand. So this is really good just because it allows you to not only free stride, but get uh, grade threes back to your hand for free. Um, moving on to our starter of the deck, we have uh, one Blue Wave Dragon Dagger Master Draco Kid. Uh, Dagger Master has two abilities. Uh, the first one is a Forerunner skill uh, that, you know, obviously moves your starter back when you ride on top of it. Pretty typical of a starter. Um, the second ability is an activation main phase skill that has a rearguard skill that's Generation Break 1. You counterboss one and put it into your soul. You choose one of your vanguards with Blue Wave in its name and it gains two abilities. The first ability is Wave Second or More, which means when you attack the second battle or more. Uh, this unit you know, would draw a card, so this is really good using it on your vanguards that restand, um, like your Flood Hazard and your Tetra Boil, uh, because when you attack multiple times, you'll draw multiple cards, so that's pretty good. Um, this card is also good uh, when you stack it with Brutal Trooper, who kind of does the exact same thing as Dagger Master's first ability that it gives. And then the second ability that Dagger Master gives is uh, Fifth Battle or more when your vanguard attacks. Um, it will get this unit will get plus one critical the unit that uh, it gives the skill to so basically fifth battle or more when your vanguard's the last attack and it's fifth battle um, then it'll get plus one critical so it'll be pretty cool for like uh, finishing your opponent off or if you want to like first turn flood hazard them uh, first try turn you can do that and try to finish them off and hopefully they won't be able to guard um, then for brutal trooper is our crits um, for our, our trigger lineup, we run 8 crit, 4 draw, 4 heal. Um, Brutal Trooper, our crit, like I just said, does the same exact thing literally as Dagger Master, except its cost is putting it back to the deck and shuffling. Um, so yeah. Then we have Supersonic Sailor. Uh, Supersonic Sailor just it has a main phase skill on the rear guard. It says if you put it into the soul, um, you unflip the damage, so that's pretty solid. Uh, obviously, you're playing Aqua Force, like it's pretty counter blast heavy at times. Um, it just helps you kind of manage your resources better so that you're not always going balls to the walls and wasting all of your counter blasts um, and not being able to get them back. Uh, then, for our draw trigger, we run four Margo clone uh, that they just got. It is the Blue Gill Trooper. Um, basically, just shoves a shove this card into your soul. Uh, on your rearguard circle and give one of your units 3k power. Also relevant just because it can make some columns with units that you did not expect. 
Um, then we have four heal, uh, Blue Wave Engineer, Refit Sailor. This is our new heal um, for Aqua Force that is part of the, all the new heals that they're giving us that bind themselves and another heal in your drop zone when you G-Guard so that you can either choose to counter charge one or soul charge one. So uh, pretty efficient. Uh, moving on to our G-Zone, we have um, the Beast uh, himself, I guess, even though it doesn't really have a gender. Uh, it's just uh, Zero Dragon of Distancy Megiddo. Um, so it's our ultimate stride of the deck. Uh, your ultimate stride just helps you kind of finish off your opponent. Like you only want to do it at a time where you are sure that you can finish off your opponent. Otherwise you're putting yourself at an extreme disadvantage being a stride deck because you will lose your entire G zone. Um, so what Megiddo does is when you place on the Vanguard Circle Counter Blast 2, if you do you choose up to five cards in total from your hand or drop zone. Um, and call them to separate rear guard circle until the end of the turn they get plus 5,000 power and they get an ability that says at the end of the battle that this unit attacked you can choose one of your other rear guards and you may exchange positions with this unit. So what this means is that you call up to five units from your hand or your um, drop zone and then um, you attack and you switch positions with something else on the board you attack with that, switch positions so it basically allows you like five attacks plus Megiddo's six attacks um, along with the skills that they have, like Foivos, Arsenal Fleet, all that stuff, um, you're able to get like more than more than six attacks, like pretty much seven to eight attacks. So if you're sure that you can kill your opponent, you can just go for it and go for the win. Um, we do run one Martial General of Wave Honor Alexandros, a new card out of this set. Uh, this card is just really, really good as a first stride, in my opinion, in this deck because. I'm just one of those people who doesn't like going into Flood Hazard for the first stride. I'd rather get the maximum effectiveness out of Floyd, uh, Flood Hazard. So I'm just going to be going into that second stride or greater if they survive the Alexander's turn. Um, but yeah, Alexander's can just be incredibly good with the rear guards that you do have access to. Um, at its ability is wave second or third. Um, you can counter boss one and flip a G unit at the end of the battle that this unit attacked and you choose two of your rear guards, stand them, and they get plus 5,000 for every card face up in your G zone. So when you're using this first stride, depending on if you G guard it or not, um, you can just have like plus 5,000 or plus 10,000 power, which is still enough to make a difference in most cases. Um, moving on to uh, our four flood hazards, I've talked about this card a lot. Um, it's two abilities is the first one, is at the end of the battle, the, it, your rear guard with blue wave in its name attacked. If you have a heart card with blue wave in its name and it's the fourth battle, you can counter blast one, uh, flip a flood hazard face up, and choose two cards from your hand, discard them. If you do, this unit restands and it gets minus three drive. So um, if you're using this first stride, you'll be getting triple drive and then no drives. If you're using this um, after first stride, you will be getting uh, quadruple drive and then one drive. Uh, because the Generation Break 3 gives this unit plus one drive and all your rear guards uh, with Blue Wave in, the, in, its, in your front row get plus 2,000 power. So, um, like I said, 2,000 power matters in this deck. Um, it does seem like a small number, but it does increase your numbers in a way that's consistent and good. Um, moving on to our uh, two of Lambros. Um, obviously, we have to run two of Lambros because it has to flip itself for its skill. But the skill is uh, when this unit attacks a vanguard, if it is the fourth battle or more, you can flip Lambros. Um, and if you do, you choose up to two rear guards, restand them. And then if the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is two or more, the unit stood with his effect, get plus 10,000. So it's basically a mini um, Alexandros, depending on how you want to look at it. Like At the same time that you use Alexandros and Lambros, Alexandros will be bigger. Um, but Lambros is also free and does not cost you a counter blast. So it's kind of just up to you how you want to format your attacks, like what you have access to. Uh, you can kind of just make a decision what's smarter to go into. Um, moving on to R2 of Tetra Boil Dragon as well. Um, obviously we run two of this card as well because it has to flip itself for the skill. Um, its skill is Generation Break 2. Uh, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you have a heart card with Blue Wave in its name, you can counter boss one and flip a Tetra Boil as long as you are Generation Break 2. And then if you do, until the end of the turn, this unit gets minus one drive. So it gets minus one drive before it does its first drive checks. Um, then it gets an ability that is fourth time or more. Uh, at the end of the battle that your rear guard attacked a vanguard, you can choose a card from your hand, discard it, and then stand this unit. So 
basically what will end up happening is you will drive check two and then you will um, do all your rearguard things uh, at the fourth battle that your rearguard attacks vanguard you'll discard one and then you'll restand tetra boil and it'll get two drive checks again so again it's like four drive checks but discarding one so it's just very very uh, useful in some situations um, probably not more useful than flood hazard because flood hazard at the end of the day will get five checks um, if you're using it effectively uh, but yeah, it's just good to have it there as a backup just in case. Uh, we do run one GB8 Blue Vortex Martial Dragon Last Twister Dragon. Um, it's Generation Break 8 skill is during the main phase. It says Counter Boss 1. Until the end of the turn, this unit gets uh, an ability that is wave second to fourth time. This is when your rear guard attacks. Um, it, until the end of the battle, it gets plus 5,000. And then at the end of the battle, you look at four cards from the top of your deck call one to the rear guard uh, with the unit that just attacked so you basically call over the unit that just attacked and then if the called unit has the wave ability this unit and that unit get plus 5,000 power so obviously um, this synergizes kind of good with some of the units in our deck like um, you know uh, Valios does not have wave Arsenal Fleet does not have wave Poibos does have wave um, and Mm, there's actually not that many cards in here that have wave. It's like only Foivos pretty much, but uh, you don't have to call a card with wave. Uh, you just have to call a card basically um, and hope that that unit plus 5k is a number that's enough to hit your opponent. Like, but you, the last Tristor Dragon can be really good because it causes like a lot of attacks um, against your opponent. Then we have uh, one Air Element Sea Breeze, obviously for when your opponent tries to not stride against you. Um, then we have one guard leader of sky and water, Ionis, uh, starting off our G Guardians. This is our G Flip Guardian that we got from the uh, most recent G Guard set. Um, then it says when your unit is placed on, or when this unit is placed on Guardian Circle, you can counter boss one, flip a G Guard face up, and then if you do choose up to five of your rear guards, they get resist and the um, effect that they cannot be hit. So even if your opponent attacks into them, they cannot destroy them because they cannot be hit and they have to be hit to be retired. Um, and then for each unit chosen, this unit gets plus 5,000 shields. So if you have a full board, you G guard into this, it's plus 25,000 shields. So it can be really big. It can also protect your units from being destroyed. Um, then we got two um, Blue Wave Armor General uh, Galifia or Galphilia. Um, we got Galphilia this set. It is an amazing G guard. Um, it is really good to flip over, flip it over with Ionis, just because you can flip it back face down with its own skill, because uh, it has two skills. The first one is a Guardian Circle skill that says if it is the second or third battle of the turn, this unit gets plus 5,000 shield when it's blocking for you. And then in the G zone face up, it has a skill that says Soul Boss One, turn this card face down and unflip a card in your damage zone or unflip a card on the field. So that would be like if you're fighting Link Joker, you can unlock cards. So you don't really have as bad of a matchup against Link Joker as you did before. Um, it's still kind of bad, but you have kind of ways out of it now, which is good. Then uh, rounding out our G Guardian lineup, we have one Blue Storm Barrier Dragon, Ice Barrier Dragon. Um, this unit just says if it's the first battle or the fourth battle or more, then when this unit is placed on the Guardian Circle, it gains shield plus 10,000. So it uh, becomes a 36k block for you pretty good um nothing much more to say about that but let's get right into our games here right when our area opens back up it's taking a while and there it is I think it's taking so long to load this area because we're using like an older version of area because uh, area has already updated but we had the recordings and stuff on this area and I hadn't like moved that over yet so I just decided to use this area. But um, yeah, so basically we are going to get right into the games here gonna have a uh, blue wave game one. So 
So, uh, first game we're playing against a Murakumo deck that is also from GBC 13. Um, we ride, and then we pass turn. Our opponent also rides, and then attacks us. Alright guys, sorry the video cut. Um, so we're getting right into our Blue Wave games. Uh, playing Blue Wave game 1, we were playing against Marakumo. Uh, Yasui deck to be more specific. Um, I draw for turn, ride uh, Baragios, he rides, attacks me, doesn't check anything, I damage check Bright Shooter. Um, I attack him with Foibos first, and then I attack him with Vanguard, checking a crit. Um, he rides, attacks me, I no guard, I take the damage. Um, then I stand and I attack. Um, I attack with Foibos first because it's not going to be the third battle or more, so I wouldn't be able to use Foibos skill. So there's no point in attacking with it, um, not first, in case he checks the damage trigger. Um, he did re-ride and attack my Vanguard so that I can't Sea Breeze him. Um, I decided to use a Velu's skill to call a card to give it 2k. Then he used Brutal Trooper to give that skill to my Vanguard. Um, then I end up attacking 11k because in this case both don't make a difference. Um, then I draw a card uh, off of the Brutal Trooper skill. Um, and then I would, so my opponent actually left right here, but I draw a card, um, then I would have ended up checking a critical and a, another Foivos. Um, so then he would have took two damage depending on what he took, um, or depending on like if he checked damage triggers or not, um, I would have been able to force more out of his hand with Foivos. So yeah, that's a thing. Uh, moving on to game two. Waiting for our card fight area to open up here momentarily. Boom. So moving into our game two, uh, we have Blue Wave game two. Um, I think we're playing against the same Yasui player. Um, he explained to me that he uh, didn't mean to quit. Uh, his computer just randomly quit area, which that happens sometimes, so it's understandable. Um, but he uh, attacks me, I take a damage. Um, I ride Gallius, then I check a Foibos. Um, he draws and rides. I go for a 10 no pass because he doesn't ride. Um, so I attack him and get Twin Drive. Even though I'm on Arsenal Fleet, it's uh, pretty bad that he is not on a grade 2. So um, I no guard his grade 2 attack, take it. Um, and then I stand and draw, I rewrite Valios, uh, because it's obviously way better to be on Valios than Arsenal Fleet. And I have the card to do it now that my opponent, like, kind of trade locked themselves for a turn. Uh, but then I attack with Foibos twice, he guards the first attack, takes the second one. Uh, then he rides and strides into, uh, Yasui, um, Goma. Uh, he uses Yasui skill, stride skill to copy the vanguard, calls the Yasui grade 3. Uh, he calls Yashibayashi to the back row, using the skill to soul blast 1, make it all active. Uh, he calls a draw trigger, uh, moves his draw trigger into soul to give 3k to his Yasui. And then he uses Goma skill to call a Goma from the G zone to the rear guard circle. And then he attacks me with 11k from the back row. Um, I just, I'm pretty sure, I just go ahead and guard, uh, with the, yeah, so I guard with the draw trigger, uh, he uses Shadow Stitch to draw a card, put a card to the bottom, and then he counter charges one and gives a card plus 2k. Um, so then he attacks for 31 to Vanguard, I take it, and he checks three non-triggers, so I only take one damage. Um, the damage that I take happens to be a draw trigger. I get power to Vanguard draw. And then he attacks with uh, Vanguard to use Shadow Stitch. And then uh, he attacks Vanguard, which can actually hit me, but I guard it. Um, and he uses Shadow Stitch to filter out his hand once again. And then he uses Shadow Stitch to bounce the grade 3 to his hand. 
Um, so I stride into Alexandros. Um, I do not use Volio skill because, of course, you have to be going to a blue wave stride to do it. Um, I play a booster, so then I attack for 16. And then uh, he says that he's thinking. Uh, so then I attack with Alexandros, second attack, wave two. Uh, checking one, two, critical trigger, uh, all to Foivos. And three is a Foivos. Uh, then we use Alexandros skill to counter boss one, restand. Uh, then we attack into him and uh, he six damage heals, but it's not enough to clutch him. Um, or it's not enough to protect him for the rest of the turn, so he just ends up dying right there. Uh, moving into our game three. With our area loading up here. Alright, so moving into blue wave game three. Uh, we're fighting against Yasui again. And then... Um, he doesn't ride to grade 1, so we just no guard. Uh, he doesn't check a trigger, so we don't take damage. We attack for 14. Um, he no guards, he takes the damage, draw, trigger, draw. Uh, he's able to ride a grade 1, play a grade 1 to the rear guard circle, search Yasui, discard a 3. Uh, he attacks for 12, he checks the heal trigger, putting the heal um, power to his rear guard. And then he attacks me for 12 and I take it as well. Um, we just ride and attack. Uh, we get a heal trigger and a foibos, which will be good for next turn. Uh, he checks another draw trigger. Uh, power vanguard draw. And then he goes for a track check, checks draw trigger, power vanguard draw. And I'm like, oh my god. So many triggers. Um, I use... Uh, Valius go to call Foivos, give it plus two. Um, then I'm using Baragios, top seven for Evalios, nothing there. So I put them back shuffle. I attack with Galius for 16. And then I attack for 16 to Vanguard. Um, he goes two to pass. So I check a PG and a critical. Um, I put the critical all effects on Foivos. Um, I attack with Foivos for 2 crit and then restand and attack bigger for 2 crit. Um, then I in turn, he goes into Yasui Kimma. And then he uses Yasui's own stride skill to uh, call a Yasui, call the draw trigger. Um, and he uses the skill of Sinbi to put the draw trigger back to the deck and draw um, two cards. Then he uses his Gimba skill to copy Yashibiyashi from the drop zone to the field. Uh, then he plays a crit trigger. Um, he goes for 31 to Vanguard. I know guard. He checks a 2. Um, a grade one and another grade one uh, so we just take one damage uh, it is a critical trigger we do put it on our vanguard uh, then he uses Mio Skate to return a card draw a card uh, he attacks our rear guard for 13 and then attacks us for 18 we guard that again uh, he uses shadow stitch to prepare himself for the coming turns uh, we got or we um, stride with Arsenal Fleet into Alexandros. We just attack for 16. He G guards um, into the new G guard that counts itself as a 36. He counter charges, um, counter charges, and then he uh, we check a critical uh, crit power because he doesn't have a uh, he doesn't have a PG so. He just no guards it and we just end up uh, double critting him. So 
that was pretty unfortunate for him. Um, had we continued to go on, um, the Foibos, or first Gallius would have been attacking for 14, and then Foibos just would have been attacking for like a lot more. We also would have gotten our grade 3 back from Bright Shooter. We have uh, PG's G guards in our hand. Like, I think we had that game in the bag anyways. Um, you can never be sure though. But yeah, he just no guarded and uh, got crit because we run 8 crits. So. And then moving on to our final game for... Uh, we have... Um, another Yasui game. So all Yasui games this matchup. Uh, he rides PG, attacks us, we no guard, um, we check critical. Uh, this time we don't have a grade 3 in our hand, so we just decide to use a Brutal Trooper to be able to draw a card, and we draw a grade 3 because we're blessed. Um, he won to passes us, and we also check out critical because we're blessed. And uh, he attacks Vanguard, we no guard, and then he attacks Rear Guard, and we guard. Uh, we ride Valios and then attack Vanguard, he no guards, uh, takes the damage. And then we attack for 16, he cards with two cards. Um, then he goes into Yasui, using Yasui Stride Skill to call a Yasui. Calls a crit trigger, calls a Goma. Uh, then he just goes 31 to Vanguard, 36 with the critical. Um, then he checks three vanilla cards. And uh, I check a trigger, as per the trend has been going. Um, then he moves to the skill. Uh, then he attacks Vanguard just for Shadow Stitch, putting cards back, then he attacks Vanguard just for Shadow Stitch, and getting the Grade 3 back to his hand. Um, then uh, we use we Skill of Alexandrus, um, so we kind of lost one, or sorry, uh, we're going to attack, we attack for 16, uh, we attack for 31, we check 1, Two, uh, three is a draw trigger, power to Foibos and draw. Um, Alexandra's skill, uh, attack for 14, and then we attack for 28, and he cannot guard it. So, uh, yeah, we just end up winning the game. So, like, like I said, Alexandra's is a very uh, threatening first stride, um, and most of the time it went through the game before you even have the Flood Hazard. So, we don't have any games where we had two Flood Hazard as an example. Uh, but yeah, that has been the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did or if it helped you out, please leave a like on the video. Uh, it means more than you guys think. Um, but do the normal, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out our social medias in the description down below. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and Patreon. Uh, for those of you who support us on Patreon, thank you so much. And with that being said, this has been Josh from Card Fight Empire, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace. Guys.